Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to edit this photo of Mr. Waffles, who is running in the dog park. I took this photo a little while ago, and I just need to get through editing. So right off the bat, we see that he is a little in shadow, underexposed. We can tell that the light is coming from the right side of the image, and we can tell that because he's bright over here on his right side, or I guess his left side, but right side of the image. Uh, and then he's in shadow over here. So opposite side of the light is where the shadow side is. And then you can also see the shadow over here. So when we relight this, we need to take that into consideration. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I like to do is uh, mess around with the camera profile. And, you know, you can kind of just hover over these or use the arrow keys like I am now pressing up or down on the arrow keys once you select it will allow you to jump through here and I'm just trying to find a camera profile that I think fits the overall image and these start to get really weird saturated when you get into the camera looks so I think I prefer the on one looks although I do like camera portrait on this particular image so let me try camera portrait and the nice thing about this is these are all non-destructive, so I can come back and change this later as long as I keep this as a raw image, which I'm using the native CR3. Now, what I like to do is hit AI Auto just to see what on one thinks should happen to the overall image. And then I'm going to pull down on this auto slider until I get to a happy medium. And I'm not looking at any of these over here. I'm actually just looking at the image overall to see what I like, what I don't like. And as I pull this up and down, it's just keeping that same ratio. Uh, I know that I need to edit here, so I'm not really looking at the shadow area here. I'm looking at the whole picture uh, because if this is off, it's kind of dark overall and there's no real life to the image. But as I pull this up, you can see that the image starts to come to life a little bit more, but I don't want it to be too bright. So I think about here is pretty good. In my new editing style, this is essentially all I do with AI Auto and the develop module because I like to use local adjustments and effects to really hone in the rest of the look in my image. So letter K, I'm gonna select everything one more time. And a faster way of me doing this could have been selecting the dog and then inverting the selection. But I'm going to right click and we're going to come to curves and I am going to use matte look natural. If I turn this off, you can see there's contrast throughout the entire image. And then if I turn it back on, you can see that contrast is a little muted. Now, this is really sharp around the edges of Mr. Waffles. So what I'm going to do is click on the mask pull up on the feather and that's just going to help it blend a little bit better. So if I hit the letter O, you can see I have like this nice little blend around Mr. Waffles. Uh, and if you pull the feather all the way down, you can see it's really sharp, not very pleasant. Uh, and this is just a fast way of cleaning up a mask. I like to add in some feather. If you've been watching any of my content, you know that I feather a lot of my photos or at least my mask. Okay, so now that I have this particular curve uh, adjustment, I think I need to adjust the contrast just a little bit because I want it to be flat, but I don't want it to lose its punchiness in the background. And now it's time to actually take care of editing Mr. Waffles here. So what I'm going to do is go to the local adjustments. And the very first adjustment that I want to add is actually a lighten and I'm not going to put too much lighten on there but we're going to lighten and I'm going to manually paint this in because I want to balance it with what's happening over here realistically if I were to use the AI select and that could get a little crazy uh, and let me show you that so if I use the AI select and then I can choose animal and hit apply and we need to invert this. You can see it's brightening up this area over here as well, 
but it's also brightening the brighter areas. Now, I could come into my settings icon and then I can pull this away from the highlights so that way this effect is not going into the highlighted area. But I can't really see that and have visual representation of how that's impacting the overall image, right? Because even if I pull this up, you can see it's still in there and it's really impacting those highlights. And then I could also come to the drop down and I could say I want this to apply to the shadows only. And then we'll just pull this back down. And now I can kind of tie this into what on one would consider to be a shadow. But again, I'm not getting good visual representation of where I'm adding my mask. So this is the reason why I like to paint it in when I do adjustments like this so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to have a brush and I'm on paint in mode with a feather needs to be up to 100 because I don't want this to uh, make a hard edge. And then I also have my opacity and flow set to 100. And this is okay because I can control the opacity of it later. So I'm just going to paint this in where I want it. And now I'm just going to look at the mask. So obviously this is not a very helpful look. So if I come up here to mask and then view mode, we'll go with red overlay and anything that's red, my effect is not going into, but anything that is not red, my effect is applied to. So I'm very easily getting a visual representation of where I'm painting in because I know where I need to work. All right. And I don't want to make this too bright because then that would be an unbalanced lighting situation because there can't be that much brightness that's happening over on this side. He's also a black dog. So I don't want him to be overly exposed on the shadow side, especially since this is very directional light. And we can tell that based off of this shadow being harshly casted over here on the left of the image. So, I'm just going to open up a little bit of these shadows and then on his face, let me hit the letter O. Yeah. So definitely in his eyes, I want to open up and I may come back and do a different pass on his eyes because that just makes more sense for this particular image. So now that I have that painted in, this is what my mask looks like. And yes, I realized that I did not paint all the way over here. Again, there's light on the right side of his face that I don't need to really adjust or modify. So now if I pull up on the exposure, you can see I'm starting to illuminate those areas a little bit more. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see that I'm starting to get more detail back. And then I also want to open up the shadows here. And we'll pull this down just a touch because now it's starting to look a little strange. So I need to bring his black skin or I'm sorry, his black fur back a little bit. And this is why I know I need to do another pass because I think I'm getting his fur exposed well enough that there's a nice little sheen and glow and it's not all in shadow you're getting that definition. You can tell where his leg is actually at in the image, um, which is what I was going for for this particular look. So now what I need to do is let me just take a quick look. Yeah. So it's still applied to shadows here. If I were to apply this to all, I would get a very different look. And that's what I forgot to mention is that I wanted this applied to just my shadows and you can see that I get a more refined look uh, and you can play around with what counts as a shadow. The further you push this up uh, closer to 100, the more it's going to consider everything a shadow. The further you push this to the left, the less it's going to consider everything a shadow. And this is just a really good way of finding that that happy medium and that that balance. Now, if for whatever reason I pull something up 
and you can see it's starting to make like that little halo around him. Well, if those are brighter areas, what I can do is pull this out of the highlights and it's starting to tabler or taper that a little bit. Uh, but it's not the very best method. And, you know, I don't like those little halos around my mask. So what I'm going to do is pull this back down until it gets somewhere that's manageable, which I think this is good. All right. So the last thing that I'm going to do to this image to kind of tie everything together is apply a LUT. And LUTs are just a really good way of getting color added into your image. Now, I have one inside of color grading and I'm just going to sample through here and find one. I really like this one. So that's comfort and we'll just keep moving through to see. Yeah. So we'll go with comfort. There it is. And what I'm going to do is pull up on the saturation and you can see that that is just extremely uh, saturated and it really takes over the image and takes away the character of the image in my opinion. So I'm just going to pull down on the opacity and then turn this off and on and you can see it just adds in some color and I can even contrast this a little bit more and it definitely adds something to the image overall uh, and I really appreciate that. So that is a pretty good look on this image so the only other thing that i would do is hit a crop or add a crop and i like the original ratio of the camera and i need to leave this on original ratio and then pull this down and i want to keep the shadow in the photo so we'll put mr waffles and his eyes on the intersecting line here so that way it's a balanced image and then have his shadow coming off to the left there and to me this is a more appropriate image it's nice and balanced uh, you know the main subject and you can tell that this is an environmental image as well so hopefully you found this video helpful if you did smash the like button if you're new consider subscribing my name is Chris. I create content centered around Almond Photo Raw. And if you want to see more, then you got to hit that subscribe button. Come join me on freewillphotos.com in the free community. And until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.